So we're here today at the Comsoft offices. We're having a bit of an R&D sesh together. <laughs> Doing rather exciting things. We're trying to find innovative and interesting uses for the Apple Vision Pro and robots. Um, which has been provided kindly by Simon here in the background. Um, so he's, uh, he's built this robot. The object of this, of our time here, is to understand not just Apple Vision Pro and spatial computing, although that's a really interesting part of it, but to extend our experience and understanding of IoT in general, digital products. And we thought this was a really lovely example to blend IoT, Simon's pet project of his robot, and spatial computing to blend those three concepts to come up with a real world solution. And that felt sensible to see, well, okay, how would we want to control a robot, and you could see how this would be applicable in the medical arena, the fence arena, all sorts of arenas where you are remote controlling something, uh, which is what IoT is, right? So the Amove robot was designed by Gail Langevin. Started the project in about 2012. He was commissioned to build certain parts of it and then decided to build the whole humanoid and open source it all. To have a humanoid robot of any degree 20 years ago or 15 years ago is major money. But he managed to create a 3D printable robot with parts that you can get off anywhere. So the servos are normal servos. It has a lot of them. This is something that hobbyists or universities can do as a, as a project. It's really allowed humanoid robotics to get into everybody's hands. People don't really realize about building robots is it's not just need to know about software. You need to know about software, electronics, engineering. There's an amazing community behind this robot and the software that runs is called My Robot Lab, which is another open source software. And what we're planning to do is build on top of that layer using their APIs. What we've got on here, we've got a Connect V2 on the front. So if anybody's got an Xbox, they would know about the Connect. That allows you to track body motion. Uh, you've got a PIR sensor here that detects when somebody's in the room. Two ultrasonic sensors detect which side of the body you are. So, ultrasonic? What, what, what do they do? You know when your vehicle reverses, go did 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 it. That's ultrasonic, so that's the same. So it sends out a sound wave that reflects back and you measure how long it takes to send it and how far you are. You've got a camera in one of the eyes. All this controlled is to buy two Arduinos with shields on the top. Then you've got a USB hub here that goes into a main computer over there. That's For a regular target, we want head movement. Up, down, side, side. Yeah, which video feed. Because okay, so. that one I've got to do some research in. We can get hand tracking or where fingers, we could close and open hand. Now, I don't know how useful this one is, but it would be cool is if they could speak into his Vision Pro and the robot spoke the words out. That would be remote present. So what about face tracking, Dave? How do you feel about face tracking? Uh, I've got no idea. I don't know if you can do that. So maybe put face face tracking over here. Yeah. So, the, but it could do the mouth, right? So mouth is the yeah. Mouth. It could do the mouth. Be limited do, to mouth. It could do eyes side to side, but not up and down. You can't roll your eyes, but you can give side eye. Yeah. If we if we go if we went for a real stretch target and built the version two head, that can do like sad happy face and put silicon face on it. Three D is three D three D. Three D. It's three D. Three D object. Manipulation, so putting the skull into 3D space. There is a 3D model of this robot. So out of this, what do you need to do to make this happen? So I've got to grease up the front piston. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Grease, grease piston. I need to work on this one. This one's a hard one. Video feed. Is hand tracking ready to go from an API's perspective? Yeah. Importantly, yeah. <laughs> this pen says whiteboard mark. And I feel like it's lying. Right, I think you probably are. Don't use that pen for a whiteboard. Lies. So the focus today is a couple of things. So Simon, as Simon has said, he's going to try and expose the video feed so that we can get the video feed into the Vision Pro. Um, but the other key focus is controlling head movement. Um, we can control arms and head movement uh, today via API. Berf has already done some pre-work on that to expose those APIs 
for Dave to, to access on the Vision Pro. And I think there are a couple of things we're trying, right? We, do, we want side to side and up and down using the Vision Pro's controller. Yes, and also tilting. Oh, you want to do tilt, so, so tilt, so almost, almost full, re full round. Dave, what are you using to detect tilt movement at your end? Yeah, so the Apple Vision Pro comes with some APIs where it can detect head movement. It basically gives you a matrix that has like the rotation, the translation of your head in 3D space. So I'm basically using that to extract like the X, Y, and Z rotation values and send that off to the API. Magic. Maths background, so this is a perfect gig for Dave. We need to think about a UI. If you, yeah, if you look at the videos that Dave has sent, where we're using it. In Vision Pro, you have three types of app, right? You've got window, sort of 3D space, and immersive. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're using the immersive one. Uh, yes. Is that because in order to track hands, you need to... Yes. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, he, he fires up a 2D window, which then goes into an immersive space, and at the moment, he's got that cube, and I don't think it's any use, but I think when, when we're using the head to control, we don't need an awful lot of UI. We need a bit of onboarding. Yep. We need to obviously keep it relatively simple given the time. The really stretched target would be to bring that skull in. And I'd love to be able to reach out, pick the skull up and move it. And you should see the puzzle app on there. It's ex exactly that. So, so we can basically render the model of the robot in 3D space in that immersive environment and you can interact with it. And if we could then twist it and it turn that, I think that's a really interesting use case because it's basically saying here's a virtual model of the thing that i'm interacting with and it could be on another planet somewhere if it's got wi-fi um, and i want to just turn it 90 degrees and and instead of it following your head or it tracking your hands you physically turn the i think that's a really nice experiment but you said that might be harder than hand tracking i think it might be a little bit harder but can you do it you should be able to <laughs> okay, so does that give you enough to get started on? Do you want yeah. to have a go on that yeah, headset? Yeah, yeah. What's the approach you're going to take? I'm looking at all the Apple videos as I start to attend. They've also released a Figma document which has got a bunch of um, assets and things in it already built for the native stuff. So controls, buttons and the various button states check boxes, drop downs, so all the basic kind of native stuff. There's a bunch of templates, backgrounds, the app icon as well, because obviously app icons are all 3D. So they're made up of three layers. So you've got a background layer, two foreground layers. So if you think about how we're going to do that, excited to get stuck up. So now we're ordering lunch, pizza. What are we ordering? Gary, what do you want? Um, I don't think I need anything. I want a bacon sandwich. Nothing. You're going to get nothing till 7.30. Why, why are you not going to eat till 7.30, Gary? What's happening at 7.30? Dinner? <laughs> Who are you having dinner with? <laughs> with? With yourself. We're going out. Award ceremony. <laughs> Do you know what? He's he must be enjoying what he's doing. If if it takes birth that long. <laughs> I'm hungry. So how do we tilt the head from side to side? Okay, so the API, the first value is the up and down movement of your head. Yeah. Uh, the second one is turning the head round. Then you've got the I, X, and Y. Oh, okay. Then you can manually control the draw. So if you wanted to like, uh, you can uh, change that. And then this one is the rotation to the side there. So they're like the sixth parameter. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's the side. one. Oh, so the eyes, they won't move together then? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you so can't move them, like, can't make them go like boss side. No, right? you can't make them boss side. I, why would you want that? There you go. <laughs> it has actually got in the eye, it's got a camera and it can do tracking of YOLO. So mm -hmm. you only do it once, so it picks up. Uh, if there's a cup in there or there's a person, there's face detection, face recognition. So, sorry, you only YOLO. I thought that's what the teenagers You only look once. Okay. 
So there's an algorithm, a machine learning algorithm that allows you to scan the image and go, that's a bottle, that's a person, but it's really fast. So it's what most robotics, uh, sorry, like you know, machine learning, OpenCV stuff use now because it's so brilliant. <laughs> Bless you. Will it wake up when I hit the API? I've turned it listening off. Oh, I see. So if you move your head, it should actually. Have you turned it off? Is the app on? Um, Turn the jaw. I think you're sending the jaw movement. Oh, no, I, yeah. I think you need to send a zero. You've sent the fifth parameter, not the sixth. Yeah. So your sense. rotation to the side of X, Y is probably your jaw. Yeah, the up and down I can work on tomorrow. So is that mechanical that you need to work on? Yeah, yeah, yeah this, this piston gets a bit stuck. Um, the last one smoked. <laughs> do you, um, um, what, what do you... So we uh, have just experienced a catastrophic failure on the shoulder. Uh, and I'll talk you through what Simon has diagnosed here. But effectively, there's a potentiometer just here, which is uh, normally, according to Simon, inside a servo. But it's outside the servo in this case. And it tells the servo when to stop, when it's reached its limit. Um, now we notice there's a screw missing off the lower portion of the potentiometer. But what there's been some failure in there which has caused the servo just to keep turning, which has sheared off. Has absolutely destroyed this worm gear there and cracked the gear casing. So the uh, gear looks okay. That casing's fine. But the casing is fine. Yeah, I think that casing looks good too. It's just the missing screw, and I wonder if, yeah, I wonder if that was the cause. I'll get that from a different point. No, 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 I'll get that. What's happened here is actually, that's printed really badly. It's hollow. It should never be hollow. When the day's finished, I'm gonna get this on the floor, put that screw back in there, check that's already still wired up, and then just print a new cog there. It's the new, it's the worm gear, isn't it? Really? Yeah, maybe a new housing. So, um, yeah, nothing comes without its challenges. We won't be controlling the arms for a bit. We are drawing to a conclusion on day one. Uh, it's been a day of back and forth, ups and downs. We've had some uh, positive initial tests with moving the head through the Apple Vision Pro. Yep. But sadly, we had the arm blow up on us. Uh, and so Simon is going to be leaving shortly because he's going to have to go home Reaping. and do some 3D printing. Yep. We will see you tomorrow, right after this. So after the disaster at the office with the uh, right arm snapping, I've just got the 3D printer fired up. I'm printing in PLA plus ST, so it's supposed to be stronger than the PLA plus. I've got the move library up. One of the problems is trying to work out if I've got the old shoulder joint or the new shoulder joint. I don't really want to replace the whole shoulder because that is going to be 30 hours of printing. We don't have the time. So just this one bit here. So this is a bit here. As you know, this, this snapped, but also this snapped, this split. I think that's the right bit. That bit alone is going to take nine hours to print. This is Cure, which is a free slicing program. So you drop your models on and it works out how to print them. And it's a brilliant bit of software. That's the challenge for the moment. Getting these parts printed, ready for tomorrow. Getting the robot back together. So that was the end of day one. A really productive day, ultimately. Do join us for part two, where we'll be working on the hands, the wrists, hopefully biceps, maybe shoulders. We'll <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how animated we can get this robot from the Vision Pro application. Please do subscribe to our channel. We'll be releasing content on a reasonably regular basis. Get in touch if you've got any questions about app development, mobile app development, Vision Pro development, robotics. And please do leave your comments below. We'd love to hear what you think and what you enjoyed and what you want to see more of. Thanks for watching.